All right, guys, what you're gonna see today is extremely dangerous. There's tree guys doing this day in and day out, and they make this work look easy, and there is nothing further from the truth. It's dangerous, it requires a high level of skill and experience. After you watch today's video, do not attempt to do anything that you see inside of it. I went to Detroit and I had to actually talk my buddy, Keith Kalfas, into showing us how to climb a tree. Keith doesn't make videos about tree work, even though he does it on a weekly basis in his business, but he doesn't make videos about it because he doesn't want you guys to watch a video and think that you can go out and do the exact same thing. And so if you're one of those experienced tree guys watching this video, will you do me a favor and put in the comments down below to the new guys that are maybe interested and excited about getting into tree work, what they should do next. What's the next steps? Where could they go to get the information that maybe they need to take their career to the next level? And speaking of careers, Keith and I talk very frankly about what a life in tree work is actually like, how much money you can make, what are the, what are the dangers that you face, and is it actually worth it to get into tree work? Tree uh, we climbing. This one here. So we're gonna climb that tree right there? Yep, that poplar. Okay, and you've done this before? Many, many times. <laughs> okay, yeah. okay. All right, the reason I'm, I'm asking him is because I'm here with Keith guys, and he's gonna teach me how to climb one of those. I've never done this before, ever. I mean, when I wanted to get to the top of, top of a tree, Keith, I usually just take an excavator and push the tree over and go, there's the top. It's laying right <laughs> down there. It works too. <laughs> yeah. What's up, I'm Keith Kalfas with the Landscaping Employee Trap YouTube channel. I said too fast. What's up, I'm Keith Kalfas with the Landscaping Employee Trap <laughs> YouTube channel. You know, I'm not gonna edit any of that YouTube at channel. Oh, good. <laughs> and today we're gonna be gearing up and climbing this poplar tree. So. I'm gonna go gear up right now. Now right, we can. So, what you do you wanna do the climbing, Elliot? I'd rather film. You wanna film? Yeah. You don't wanna go up top? Not right now. <laughs> you know, I'm not scared of heights, I'm scared of getting to the heights. Actually, <laughs> hold this. I'll, I'm gonna tell you guys something. I'm not scared of heights at all, I'm just scared of falling. Take everything out and lay all the gear out and then make sure the rope there's no knots, including the lifeline rope, the green rope underneath. Ooh, I already got my raise. <laughs> so this is my my lifeline. This has got to be a 6,800 pound tension, some multi-braided nylon lifeline, and this is for actually what you climb from. This is what you hang from. You can actually pick up a pickup truck with this and it won't break. This carabiner right here is at least a 12,000 pound tension carabiner. Don't ever use a standard carabiner like you would get from the Walmart or something. It's triple action, so it's not gonna come out on you. Pull the carabiner down, twist the lock, pull it back. That's safety. Make sure any carabiner you use has triple action like that. <laughs> I was wondering, come here, look at this. Can you see that? Is that is it in focus? So that's your lock, right? Down, turn, spin. Okay, All yeah. right, that makes sense. Then this is also connected to it. That's a double knot, so it's stopped and it won't it won't thread back on you when you're in the tree. Now, okay. you're supposed to do and undo your double knot because the braids can get weak. See, I could go through so much safety. Before you do anything, you're supposed to check all of your ropes, all of your gear, go through everything and make sure there's no frays or fringes or anything messed up or any cuts you weren't aware of in your lifeline. If you, if you go to climb and maybe something got cut and you weren't aware, the smallest little uh, tear through the fibers, it, it's a huge safety risk. Hard hat always, safety glasses, whether they're clear or dark, doesn't matter. And then make sure you got a chin strap, an actual helmet for, for tree climbing. And then gloves so you don't tear up your hands on the tree bark. So I got my gaffs on, got the saddle. And right here is an eight foot steel braided lanyard. This is a buck strap. So I always have a, a backup for when you're climbing from crotch to crotch. And this is an adjustable buck strap. 
So, so why does it have this weird? So it, oh yeah, it has this because it's adjustable. See that? You can go all the way out, or you come close. So once you're up in the tree and you're close and you need to tie yourself in so you can do your work, you want to make it closer to you so you're more taut in the tree and you have better points Stand. of stability. Because if you're hanging out far, you can't do much. You develop a symbiotic relationship with your gear. Same with this too. You'll see how it's adjustable in a second. This right here is important. This is called a floating D-ring. So you can navigate and move in the tree, right? And uh, first time I put this on, my wife thought it was really hot. I don't know, but that's cool. <laughs> I'm gonna be climbing what's called old old school. Look at my fist. My lifeline knot is gonna be in what they call a monkey's fist, or it's gonna be in a Blake's hitch. So basically, you can climb with petzels, all different types of new tools and tree gear. I'm gonna be doing it old school. But anyways, don't ever go up in any tree unless you have your lifeline attached to you, no matter what. And then not only do I have the lifeline right here. This blue rope is called the work line. This is for roping, this is for rigging, this is for setting a gin, doing the work that you need to do if you have to rope something down. When in doubt, rope it out. Mm, good point. What does that purple strap bunched up behind you on your belt do? This is for roping and rigging, for, for dropping branches, for roping things down. Uh, it's connected to a carabiner, so you can actually throw a strap, kind of like a running bowline, but without the actual knots to a log, and it cinches up and tightens on the branch connected to your uh, your work line when it comes down. Yeah. What kind of a career can they have in this field of work? What kind I mean, of career? What, what kind of a career? What kind of hours? What kind of a pay? What's the compensation? Like I know it's a, it's different oh, across the whole so, country, but I mean, what can a guy make if they're going to be willing to put their life on the line doing this stuff? Uh, tree Literally, work, the baseline for tree work, even if you're on a job by yourself, is minimum 250 bucks an hour, about, and then when you're working. Like, I won't even put my gear on and go up a, a tiny tree. It's 150 just to put my gear on, or I'm not even entertaining it. And now it's, I mean, that was then. I, I mean, I used to think tree work was extremely lucrative. Yeah. But I look at all the associated risk and liability involved with it. So unless you're 100% committed to it, I think it's not a very smart career to get involved at all. If you're doing it just for the money, you ask professional tree guys this that do this every day. If you're trying to get into this business for money and, you're, and your thinking is backwards, you have to be passionate about it. So the passion comes first and then that's where the good money comes in. I have friends that have raked down uh, 20 grand in a week doing this, especially with storm damaged tree work when the winds blow through. So they're doing it on a job by job basis, but there's guys out there working for the bigger tree companies yeah. where they want the job security. They're bringing in about $25 an hour, and that's yeah. one of the top guys, one of the top guys, the yeah. guy that can go out and do this stuff all by himself all day long, and the company doesn't have to babysit him. And that's honestly for the risks you're taking. I'd like to see these guys get paid more. Plain and simple. I mean, yeah. this kind of stuff, it really deserves bigger pay because it's a, there's a bigger risk. The bigger the, the more skill involved, the bigger the risk, the bigger your pay should be. So I, this is an industry that I think is underpaid. The guys who start getting in the next step and say they take out loans and they go into debt and they get chippers and boom trucks and big equipment, now they can take on bigger jobs and make more money. They obviously have more overhead. But what I'm looking at is do I want to be doing this uh, okay, in my later years? Now this, no. is, this is also a different scenario. Those guys are also doing it on a, a bid basis. So they'll look at this tree and they'll say this is a $1,500 tree or $1,000 tree. I'm All right. up now, I've got the lanyard around the tree. I'm staying relaxed. When you first start, you literally can't even do it. You're, you're scared, you're freaking out, you're, you're holding the tree. And basically to go up, you flip the lanyard up, you take baby steps, and you hump the tree. I know it sounds funny, but... And I just tell you, I have my scabbard and my saw right here. See this? Specifically, because when I go up, I need to saw obstacles that are on my way up. Be very careful in the tree with this. Make sure you don't hit your lanyard or hit anything, put it right back in the saw holder each time you use it.
Keith, what's the highest you've climbed? 115 feet. Like oh. so high you can't even see anything. How high do you think you are now? 30. Now? 25, 30 feet. Not even. Oh, one more thing that's very important. Yeah. It'll look easy, but if you go up in a tree and you think you can climb higher because you, like you, you just think you can do it, you could actually have a panic attack in a tree and get stuck in there and nobody's gonna come save you. I only went up to the first crotch, but through the lifeline around the fattest part of the crotch. And then I tied a Blake's hitch right here with a stopper knot so it doesn't run through. So here's the system. This is the most basic. You can set up micro pulleys, you can do all types of stuff, but if I undo this system and I back it out, so you throw the carabiner. around the crotch, back through, hook it up to the floating D-ring, like this. You grab the tail end of the lifeline. I mean, yeah, and this is your tail here. And you can do whatever side you want you that you get used to. It's good to practice with both. And you wrap it around one, two, three, four times, over, down, back around, up through two. So watch this. Four times, back around. Here's where the friction grips. Then you take the tail end and you feed it through these two, like this. Tighten up the system. Tighten it here. Run it up like this. Make sure it's nice and clean. There you go. Then you want to back test it like this. You sit down in the tree before you undo your buck strap or your lanyard so you're still secure is if this is loose you'll drop down like an elevator with no brakes so you go like this so once it's good it's taut then you run a figure eight knot you can call it a the stopper knot a figure eight knot but like this you twist once twice watch you twist once twice and then run it through, tighten it, and that won't come undone, so it won't run through. And then you make sure the system's tight by when you sit down, you take and you press up as you sit, and you yank that Oh, like this, so it's super tight. And then if you wanna descend down, you take your two fingers like this, and it loosens the system. See, I can't, I can't move now. But if you take your fingers, it slides, so you can control the speed and the new technology the new stuff they have out is like you just touch a mechanical device and you go right up and down it's really fascinating what they've come out with and a lot of this stuff is invented by even tree guys that have been in this because so the, the reason why this sucks if i don't have a a micro pulley is you can't ascend the tree every time you want to go up you have to sit there and back the system up to retighten yourself mm -hmm. if you're going out on a limb you have to constantly adjust it manually versus a micro pulley system you can pull it and it adjusts itself uh -huh. so, so that would probably be your better bet yeah you can just hang out if i was um up there you know i showed enough that is that good yep okay now you're going up do we got time with the rain coming in yeah <laughs> <laughs> Take your thumb like that. Now reach around and flip it up. Yeah. 
and then now stick your foot in the tree left and right wider because you're going to hurt your hips wider yep yep now take a step up with the other one jam it in the tree yep now your buck strap's a little too low so you're going to pump the tree at the same time as you flip the strap up one more foot now pump the tree and flip it up at the same time you gotta trust the gear. Yeah, yeah. So now, take this and pull and tighten and bring yourself in a little bit. Pull it out this way. Yeah, it'll do it automatically, but you have to loosen your tension while you pull it. Did it go up at all? Yeah. Okay, cool. Yeah. And now, go up another two, three steps, and then repeat the process. Not big steps, no, no, back down, baby steps. Like 10 inches. Yeah, baby steps. See those big, see those? Steps he's taken? Too big. Little steps. You made this look easy. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's the only reason it's hard for him is because he's fighting himself because his body hasn't gotten used to it. It's his first time, that's normal. How you doing, fan? Well, this is actually pretty cool. So remember. If he doesn't really dig that spike into that tree, because he's using gear for climbing with spikes, he'll slip off and he'll feel it. So if you slip, that, that lanyard's gonna catch you if you don't really spike into that tree good. So this is like a poplar and the wood is soft. If it was something like an oak tree, which you should never trim this time of year, it's like, dude, it's like hard, it's totally different, and you, you'll feel it. It's like sticking the spike into a brick. And if you can feel it, your feet are all bruised up. Every time I take a step, I gotta pull the slack out, right? Oh yeah, because if you don't, and you, well, you're not gonna fall, but. <laughs> Getting the hang of it? Nope. You're pulling oh, the wrong man. end of the right? Oh yeah, you're good. Can't say I am, yeah. Always periodically, an obsessive habit, periodically. Always checking your gear, is everything hooked up? Is the carabiner loose? Like, make sure everything, because something can come undone. If you rub up against a branch or something, it, it can literally pull. Can you actually even see anything, Elliot? Yeah. I mean, you're not great, but you can, we can see you. All right, how do I actually get down? So you take the two fingers on each side of the rope, without getting rope burned, don't touch the rope. Pull down on that system, and watch it just a little bit. Just a little bit and then let go. If you start falling, let go of the rope. Yeah. <laughs> no, stop. All right, guys, the truth is, is a storm set in, it got dark, and a whole lot of other excuses, which thankfully kept me from climbing all the way to the top of the tree. I'll be straightforward honest with you guys. I was like half wiped out, and I only got a quarter of the way up that Keith went up to and down again. There's a lot that goes along with muscle memory and getting your body conditioned to be able to go all the way up and down comfortably. I was tense the whole way up, the whole way down. I was happy that a storm came in. I was happy that it got dark. I was happy that I didn't have to go all the way up and down because my ego would have forced me to do it, but my body would have been in pain for days afterwards. Keith makes this stuff look easy and tree guys in general make this stuff look easy so if you see a tree guy out there just realize that they have a high level of skill that they probably just don't get recognized for the dirt monkey is recognizing you tree guys out there god bless you tree guys do me a favor help the new tree guys that are interested in this line of work understand where to go leave some comments down below